My name is Mark Shaw Evans, and I'm training to be a Muay Thai fighter. I've boxed, I've done some MMA. Um, I knew I didn't want to go back to doing MMA, and it just seemed like the next evolution of things to do. Uh, Muay Thai is uh, known as the art of eight limbs. Uh, it's referred to the art of eight limbs because you can strike with your hands, your fist, your elbows, your knees, and your legs. Another unique uh, form of the art is a clinch, which you know, in boxing is called the sweet science, and you only use your hands. You clinch in boxing, you gotta, you're broken up right away, and then you gotta resume your combat. So it's basically boxing, but you get to use uh, six more weapons, and you get to clinch in it. Fucking foot jam. Nice. I gotta keep your weight in your left. I know. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> it's kind of weird how your body works because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't like sweet stuff, I don't really eat crazy amounts of food, but because I wasn't doing anything, I was eating maybe once or twice a day, and my metabolism basically slowed down to a point where. I was just putting on weight for no reason. The highest I ever weighed was uh, 450. And that was, um, when I went to the doctor and I seen that, I kinda, I was shocked because my whole life I've been a big guy. I got broad shoulders, I could barely walk through some doorways. And I, was, I could still go out and play basketball. I played on a semi-pro football team a little bit. So I was like, man, I could still go do these things and I could still move around pretty good, but it's like, I didn't like where I was headed. Those of you that don't know Shy, he's about six foot, six foot one. When he came in, he's probably about 450 pounds easily. And uh, you know, he, he emailed me and was interested in trying some martial arts, just to get in shape, something different, you know, not the same gym routine. And uh, he came in. And he said he was going to be a bigger guy, and I didn't realize he was going to be 450 big. But you know he's pretty big, and we did some of the warm-up stuff up here, and he's pretty winded. He's pretty out of shape. I mean, you couldn't do even like a minute worth of exercise. So, um, so he was he was in bad shape, let's say. And then they checked my blood pressure. My blood pressure was high, and then everything was at risk. Everything, diabetes, everything, and I was just blown away. I was like, this isn't an issue that I should have. This is a, this should be something I could easily fix. I've been at athletic my entire life and I have a 10 year old daughter, a four year old son and I instantly started thinking like, man, if I keep going like this, I'm not even gonna be able to play sports with my son. My wife getting worried all of a sudden, you know, that, that had something that had a lot to do with um, motivating me. It's when, when you're responsible for other people, you're, you all of a sudden have to do things. I'm providing financially, I'm providing that I'm there and I'm teaching life lessons, but what if I'm not there five years from now? Who's gonna provide everything that needs to be provided for then? And so I, I just know I needed a change. I'm not gonna get up and go run. Lifting weights is fun, but unless I have someone to lift with, it, it becomes a chore and becomes boring. And it's like, there's no one there to push you. And so when I, when I started doing this, I, there was somebody there to push me. Don't let him fool you. He looks like a uh, sweet, innocent, teddy bear type of guy. He whips my ass all the time. Yeah, I think the easiest way is to go back first a little bit. I've described Shah um, when he started at first. Shah came in wanting to lose weight in a different way to get in condition, a different motivation in order to change his life around. All right, that was the first thing that starts off. The TBA wasn't even in the frame yet. See, when I started in October, I didn't think I was going to fight in any tournament. And so I, the whole reason I did this instead of MMA is because I didn't want to be pushed um, into fighting. 
The TBA has been something that we've been involved in. It's been going since 2006 and we only missed one year of the TBA. Every year we put uh, two or more people in the championship bouts. But when they asked me if I was interested in doing um, the TBA tournament, you know, I was already training roughly about three months. And, you know, I was just doing private lessons with uh, Mackie. We were having conversations, you know, with, you know, just g talking to everybody about that. And, you know, and it was something that, you know, thought he could do good in. You know, he's got good hands. He's got good footwork for his size. And, you know, with the right motivation and his weight class, he could definitely is something that it was, a, it's an attainable goal. When he asked me, I was like, you know what? Yes. Instantly. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Now, him going to TBA was, to me, it was like a switch turned off in him. Every single day I came for fight prep, my body and my mind got pushed a little bit further. There was no day where I came in and it was just a drop off where I felt where I was bored or, or I went home and I wasn't tired or sore. Every single day my body got pushed a little bit further and I could feel it when I was done. So, you know, you're talking two and a half to three and a half hours some nights of pure training, um, getting ready, and I never dreaded it. I think the TBA gave him a reason to bring Muay Thai into his life as a lifestyle like I described, so that because there was some, some goal other than just going there to work out. Now he's a completely different person. His technique has changed 180 degrees. His attitude has changed 180 degrees and his motivation, okay? His power, his skill, his knowledge. Like uh, when we first started talking to him about skill set or what we wanted him to do, he didn't have the knowledge of what we wanted him to do. But as we developed the game plan and the strategy and he took to the camp, you know, everything was, everything came together based on the knowledge and stuff to it. And then he started caring about his nutrition. He started caring about being part of the team. He started caring about himself more and then that gave him more goals to be a better person. You know, so it just kind of, was a catapult to give him a reason to change his life. I thought I was well prepared. I thought I was as prepared as I could be, basically starting in October, not knowing I was gonna fight. Starting fight prep basically, I think it was January, getting ready to fight for June. So moving around was one of the bigger things we were working on, is not you know making sure once you get into position, you know, to throw your jab or throw an overhand or, or throw something, move. Stick and move, stick and move and getting that. My expectations of going into the tournament was that we had known that he had power and he had a strategy. And if we could keep him from burning out his cardio so that he wouldn't get so involved in the fight and so involved in the adrenaline dump that we could, you know, we could keep him in there and he could go all the way into this tournament. Skills wise, knowledge wise, and competitive wise, I knew it, we knew that he could do it. When I get in the ring, um, Mackie tells me, <laughs> Mackie starts amping me up and telling me, you got this, you got this. Right away, I want you to throw your jab and um, cobra. Right away, don't even let him breathe. Just go in there and do it. Sure enough, we touch gloves, we come out, jab, cobra, boom, put him against the ropes. Cool. You got to get in and do what you got to do. So basically, you know, I told him, there, told him to get in there and, you know, and get busy right away. And the whole time I was working on an overhand. My overhand is, I know if I land my overhand, it's, gonna, it's not gonna feel good. I, I must have seen something, I, I don't remember now, but I threw it and it landed. And when I came back over, um, he fell. So I was like, oh, sweet, he's down, yes. And he gets a knockdown actually right away. I don't know why the guy didn't count it. You know, he didn't count it as a knockdown because he, he, the guy fell from a, a punch. First round, in our opinion, he won. And the guy didn't have no answer to his power, no answer to his jab, and no answer to the strategy that was going. I'm a little bit tired, but I'm, you know, now I got a minute to rest. I believe at that also, at that round one, um, as it got more involved and Sha was going, that he got a little bit aggressive and the adrenaline kicked in. And he was so in tune with wanting to beat the guy right away 
instead of taking his time and preparing himself for later rounds. But you could tell that that got him winded a little bit, staying that busy. You know, but that was the key. You know, if he he stayed on the guy at that intensity, you know, he would won he would have won all three rounds. Second round comes out uh, again, doing okay, throwing a couple punches. He's throwing a couple punches, and then all of a sudden he catches me with a front kick right to my jaw, and I don't remember much after that. To be honest, it's he must have caught me pretty good. And uh, and that you know, he was already tired from the first round. Now they're getting in the clinch mode. Second round, he's even more tired. So you know, physically, you know, he was just unable to um, you know have a good offense. He still had in his mind he had what he did, what he needed to do, but his body wasn't with his mind. You know, so his cardio caught up to him. But it's close. It's close enough where if I just show up in the third round, I should get the win. Come on in the third round. I don't have much left. And he starts to go to work. Um, his punches start connecting. Um, I'm able to push him off. Me. And even when I land a Cobra, my Cobra backs him up some. So it's like, to be honest, I don't remember the third round at all. I took quite the beating there, um, but the only thing that I can remember in my mind is I refu I knew I wasn't going down. Your mind starts to go into that mode where it's like, okay, maybe you had enough, give up. And that's where the 15 weeks of training really kicked in is like, don't be a bitch right now, man the fuck up, and keep going. Round's done, fight's done. Um, I'm completely out of it. I'm gassed. I can't breathe. I, I remember sitting in the corner and saying, I can't breathe. And Mackie's like, breathe through your nose. I'm like, no, I can't. It's, it's, there's tons of blood in my nose. On a first time fight is you never know how somebody's going to perform. It's like, it's really almost like skydiving at times. It's like, how are they going to, are they going to be able to pull the cord for the first time? You can win it. He could have totally won it. You know, it just wasn't in his cards this year. Yeah, the experience had a big part in it. But now, you could probably take him and t put him in another fight right now and he'd do two times better just based on that experience of understanding how to control himself. Something I, I don't think I'll ever forget, ever, ever, is go back to the corner and I just tell Mackie and Mike, yo, I'm sorry. And, they, and Mike's got this big ass smile on his face. It's like this cheesy smile. He's like, what are you, nothing to be sorry about. He was like, you went three rounds. You did great. Post fight, I was really happy with first the attitude. All right, it's obviously hard when you work this hard to lose. All right, but when you when you've given it 100% and you put everything into it, and you lose with dignity, meaning that you didn't do, it wasn't like you were cheating on any of this regiment. You put yourself 100% into it, full heartedly, and then you lose because of some some attribute of the match or some attribute that's your own that actually is a personal lesson. So then the personal lesson gives you for moving on now, what you want to change about yourself in order to, to become a better fighter. The best experience of my entire life. There's no, the adrenaline rush that you get can't be explained. Like if the coaches tried to explain it, it, it wouldn't have worked. His attitude was after he shook off the loss, he enjoyed the fight. And the first thing he said is, Mike, I'm hooked, I'm in. I'm in for next year, I'm back, can't wait to get back to the gym. It wasn't like, you know, I'm gonna take some time to think about this and he was all down or anything like that. Now that I've experienced um, the training and the fighting, one, I would recommend to anybody that isn't doing anything, first of all, get in shape. Do whatever it takes. I'm not saying do Muay Thai kickboxing, even though it's great, I definitely give it a cosign, but um, I would definitely do something, don't, don't not be active. Now that I'm doing that, I'm addicted to it. I've never been addicted to drugs, alcohol, nothing. I'm addicted to this like it's, like it's crazy. My body, like if I'm not throwing a punch, if I'm not throwing a kick, if I'm not doing a knee, I'm not happy. I get to come to this place, clear my entire mind, burn off steam, enjoy the people that are here, enjoy the, um, the owner, the, the, the trainers, the everything, it's, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me, besides my kids. Best thing.
because it's gonna give me a longer life and it's made my mind focus even more. 